So yeah, overall, a little bit of a disappointing setup scenario. So how do we make this better? That's really the meat and potatoes. So how, you know, how should you start a level 10 game? So for me, I mean, I, I've said this a million times. You should always start your games in media res. I think if you're going to start a high level campaign, this is doubly true, like even more true than it would be if you're, you know, level one adventurers, you can kind of be like, well, they're hanging out in the tavern because they're not super important. They don't have anything to do. So things are quiet right now. OK, fine. Level 10 characters which is to say, you know, if you translate this to any other system, characters who are midway through their career as an adventuring PC, they have already done stuff. They're important. They're up to something. They're doing things. They, you should start session one of they're in the middle of a big job. You know, just immediately sell the point. So a perfect example is the Black Company books. Because the Black Company books, the characters are more or less, they are kind of in the realm of like level 10 PCs, like they're kind of in that zone in terms of like power level and importance. And the opening of that book series is they're on a mission in a city and they are sieging the city for their, uh, their, for the person who hired them. And they're like moving through the streets taking over spots like, you know, holding down civilians, like capturing people like they are doing shit immediately. And they're doing like important army, you know, uh, not not maneuvers. What's the word I'm looking for? Army like operations, basically. Can't think of what the word I want to use there. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I feel like if you're going to start. Operations works. Yeah, there was a different word I'm looking for, but operations also works. Uh. So it's like if you're going to start with characters who are sort of midway through their career, I feel that's the kind of vibe I feel like you should be hitting. Because you want to kind of hammer home that, you know, the PCs are more important than they would be if they were starting at level one. You know, these like mid tier characters, there's more going on. They've done stuff. They're more important. They're obviously more powerful. It's like they can handle more important things like get in there, get crazy. Uh, so, so, yeah, I, I just think going on that. I mean, I don't know. I <clears throat> I don't know if you have a slightly different take on this or not, but I feel like the in media res thing is is holds that doubly importance in this particular uh, case. Oh, you yeah, know, hard agree. Yeah, like. Rather than, oh, you should go find these nobles. We should be in the graveyard. The graveyard's been cordoned off with like walls of fire and we're <laughs> immediately in combat. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's, it, I want the I bet you're wondering how we got here kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The slow burn like doesn't really it doesn't really make it's doesn't it's not that it doesn't I shouldn't say this it's not that it doesn't make sense it just feels kind of bleh because you want your characters to feel important you know because they've presumably earned a station of some kind so they should feel more important and when you start with kind of a slow burn they're just not going to feel as important it, it's just doesn't it's not going to hit the same way. Which is also mm -hmm. why I, I, and this is this is going to sort of segue into another thing. I think and this is not a D&D &D specific thing. This, I think, applies to any game where you're starting this kind of mid level character. I think if you're going to have characters who, start, who are starting at a mid level, then you as the GM should establish and enforce a, a more strict um, a more strict group dynamic and what I mean by that is the player characters are higher level they've done jobs together you don't I mean there is probably uh, there's some sort of adventure idea out there where the player characters are high level and then meet each other at the beginning of the adventure 
there's some scenario where that works. But for the most part, if you're going to have these higher level starting in uh, PCs, you're going to want them to be a, an established team right from the jump. You're going to have a you're going to assume they've done some stuff already because it just makes sense, really. So I think you should really take the time if you're the GM who wants to start the game at a higher level, which, by the way, I didn't say this before. I think starting the game, starting if you've played a game a bunch, 5e being a perfect example, if you've played a ton of 5e and you're like, oh, we'll have another campaign idea, but man, oh man, I don't know, those lower level slogs and like last time we didn't make it to level 20 and I'd like, really like to get to level 20 with this campaign, but those lower levels suck ass. I do think you should start a higher, start at higher level. I think it's a good idea. If you as a GM have played the game a bunch and you have players who are comfortable, I think there's no reason not to start the game at a higher level, I, especially for 5e, because if you want to play those higher level abilities and characters, you know, you want to play a level 20 character. One of the ways to make it easier to get to that point is to start at higher level. So you're more likely to reach level 20 because going from level 10 to 20 is a much easier ass than going from level one to 20. Yeah, no hard agree. It, it just <laughs> like you sort of and again, like what Josh said earlier, really, this is for experienced parties who've been playing a bunch. You get to skip all the like, yes. oh, yeah. well, like I get to do the cool character thing, uh, but I got to get like this level first and then yeah, I, yeah. my build comes together. It's like you get you get to have your build. You get to you have, get to most have of your the cool pre-established shit. dynamic. Yeah, you get your yeah. cool magic items. You get to like you get to the you get to get to the good part, right? Yes. Session one, we're fighting a dragon. Basically, that's yeah. the shit that people are looking for. And then again, it's just less plan- planning that the DM has to do because it's like, oh, well, you're already friends with the king and shit. I don't have to build any of that out. You're just job's done right and and uh, it's not a good idea for players who are totally fresh or in a gm who's totally fresh i just dropped my phone um but yeah if you're all if everyone's experienced and comfortable there's not a lot of benefit to starting at lower level unless you're trying to tell a very specific kind of narrative at lower level Sorry, I had to grab my phone. Um, and that is that is our scenario right now. We have both a GM and our group of, of four or, or three. Is it three of us? Four of us? There's four of us. I can count. I was about to say four of us. <laughs> There's four of us. Um, all four of us of players have all played 5e a bunch. Uh, and I think we've all run it. Also, wait. Yeah, we've all played and run the game. So we all know. What the hell we're doing? Has Lita? So, she has, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So, we're in I a I had position. to worry about using it. We only, we just call her by her screen name anyway, so I don't have to worry about, like, the double think on that one. <laughs> I, it's not, all right, never mind. We don't do it. I'll, I'll talk about this later. Anyway. I, look, it's, it's, it's her screen name no. on my server. That's all that matters. It, it literally you, not. You've no. explained it already. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> um, you completely broke my train of thought now. God damn it. <laughs> Oof. You son of a bitch. Oh, okay. So, you want to start the game at level 10. And uh, as Isaiah said, like, oh, you already, you already know the king, right? That's good. And you're a party together. Yeah. I think you need to go a little bit, st- uh, one little step further and really hammer home what the group's dynamic is uh, before before you really get going. And, and what I mean, and I don't mean like, how are the group friends or like, how do they like each other? No, no, no. What is their job? What kind of group are they are? So for, for example, uh, Blades in the Dark as a game specifically says your group of 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 ne'er dwells of scoundrels has been together for a little while and you are an established team of sorts what kind of g- or gang really i should say gang uh not team <laughs> team sounds too nice uh you're an established gang of sorts 
what kind of gang are you? And the game literally forces you. I think you should apply that logic to pretty much any any time you're starting with PCs that are more midway through their career. I think you should apply that logic. So if you think about it in a D&D context, you know, are your characters like a special strike team that the king has employed in other scenarios? Are your characters a bunch of ragtag ass clowns that have gotten the attention of the city because they saved the city from a big threat or because they they got involved in a political situation by accident and now they're they're just a bunch of goons, but now they're goons with a reputation. So everyone notices them, you know, are they do they officially work for the government? Are they like a literal like SWAT team? Are they part of the military? Are they an evil cabal of wizards who are trying to burn the whole thing to the ground? Like, I think it really helps to be more strict and establish what kind of group you're dealing with when you're dealing with mid-level characters. Because, you know, at level one, you know, you're just kind of a bunch of clowns who get together and you do jobs, especially in the D&D context. You know, you're just some goobers who get together. And it's fine to do it that way because it makes sense. You know, the characters aren't super relevant. They're not as powerful. They probably haven't done anything crazy. So it makes sense that they're just some people who have sort of come together and then you will slowly decide what their dynamic is because not for nothing, but basically every D&D game, the characters start as a bunch of like dude Mick guys. And then you usually end up being some sort of important team, right? The, the critical role thing, like, oh, we're Vox Machina or we're what, uh, the Mighty Nine, right? Like, eventually you get to that point. Or what's their new one? This is an aside. Do you, do you know what the Hell's Bells? Do you know Hell's what their original team name was? The Shits. Yeah, the super high intensity team. Yeah, I kind of mm-hmm. love that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yes. It's good. I do. I do remember that story. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's pretty common for D&D groups to kind of end up there. So if you're already level 10, you should establish that kind of stuff right from the jump. And this is maybe going to sound bad, but basically don't give your players a choice. Tell them you have to be this kind of a dynamic. You have to be associated with each other in some kind of way and be very firm about that. And I know it's gonna sound like you're being bossy, but at the end of the day, it's for their own good. It is of their benefit because then you as a GM can go, okay, I know what kind of team dynamic player characters have. I can now build off of that. You know, a, a perfect example, if the players are a military strike team employed by the king, then you can open up with them doing a special military operation, you know, Metal Gear Solid style. And it basically the opening to Metal Gear Solid 3. And you have a strong opener and a good premise to build off of. And obviously, this is not me saying that you should not tell your players exactly what their characters are, but establish what their team is and then let your players fit their characters within to that dynamic you know just because the characters are a military squad doesn't mean nobody can play an evil character right like maybe one of the characters is evil but they keep it secret maybe it's a suicide squad situation where they're being like forced to do it like there's all sorts of options within that but establishing that very specific group dynamic early before the campaign gets going i think will really help you tighten down the screws and bolts you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. You you can you can jump in here. I feel like I'm uh, yapping a lot. No, I mean I I so I, I it's it's because I agree, right? Like I, mm-hmm. you know, yes, it does sound mean.